Well, a very good morning to you all and welcome to our service. It's lovely to have you with us. Now, spoiler alert, because if you're watching this and planning to attend the Sunday in-person service, then you maybe don't want to bother because they're very similar in style and in content. And that's the way it's going to be over the next few weeks. We will continue with the pre-recorded service. And I hope that those of you who are unable to join us in church will benefit from this. A little bit more of that later on. But first of all, let us worship God together. Crown him with many crowns, the Lamb upon his throne. While heaven's eternal anthem drowns all music but its own. Awake my soul and sing of him. Your Savior and your matchless King through all eternity. Crown him the Lord of life, triumphant from the grave, who rose victorious from the strife for those. reading today is taken from Psalm 118. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Let Israel say, his love endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, his love endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, his love endures forever. When hard pressed, I cried to the Lord, he brought me into his spacious place. The Lord is with me and I will not be afraid. What can mere mortals do to me? 
The Lord is with me. He is my helper. I look in triumph on my enemies. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in humans. And it is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in princes. Amen. Our second reading today is taken from John chapter 13, reading verses 33 to 35. My children, I will be with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and just as I told the Jews, so I tell you now. Where I am going, you cannot come. A new command I give to you, love one another. As I have loved you, so must you love one another. By this everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. Amen. My Lord, what love is this that pays so dearly that I, the guilty one, Oh 
a hero needed in red or maybe black. Make yourself a story. It's Alexander. Oh, it's Alisson! Unbelievable! The big Brazilian stopper has only gone and gone forward and scored a header with the last touch of the game. That was Alison Becker, the Liverpool goalkeeper, doing something goalkeepers aren't usually meant to do, scoring a goal. And it was a very important goal because it won the game for his team, Liverpool. In the interview afterwards, he was quite emotional. And that was because he dedicated the goal to his father. His father had died in tragic circumstances just a few days previously. Alison was unable to travel to Brazil to mourn with his family because of the COVID situation. In his interview, he said this, referring to his club Liverpool and to his teammates. This is where I feel the love of God. This is how God often speaks to us, through people. What a lovely thing to say about his teammates, many of whom share his Christian faith. In fact, one of those people who shares his Christian faith is his manager, Jurgen Klopp. And in his match day programme notes, Jurgen Klopp wrote something very similar. He said this, The world has experienced far too much loss recently, but for Ali, our wonderful, loving, soulful teammate, this has been a tragic time. I wish to let Alison know how much his team and his club love him and his family. The greatest tribute possible to Alison's father is the person his son is and has become. He honours him every day of his life. Ali has the strongest faith of anyone I have ever met. So he knows that one day he and his father will be together again to celebrate all the special memories that he creates from this moment on. Wasn't that such a lovely thing to say? And, and clearly a club where there is something very special happening with people sharing faith and loving and caring for one another. That's a team that I would like to be a part of. Well, of course, we should be part of a team like that because the church should embody the ministry of Jesus and it should be a loving organisation. An organisation that knows the love of Christ and that is able to reach out in the love of Christ to others. You see, Jesus is a God of love. And we see that running throughout the Bible. It doesn't matter, it doesn't matter where we look. And um, we go to the Old Testament in Psalm 118 says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, his steadfast love endures forever. In the book of Song of Solomon, we have the writer comparing God's love to the love of a husband for his wife. And he says, he brought me to his banqueting table and his intention towards me was love. In the book of Hosea, we have the love of God for us likened to a parent for a child. It says this, when Israel was a child, I loved him. It was I who taught Ephraim to walk. I took him in my arms, tied him with cords of human kindness and with bonds of love. And in the New Testament, the message is exactly the same. Paul the Apostle writes, God proves his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And the first epistle of John puts it like this, in this is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the expiation of our sins. And perhaps most unforgettable of all, John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whosoever should believe in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Now have we really accepted what that means? Have we really comprehended that Jesus is the God of love? Intellectually, we can perhaps grapple with that quite easily, but to emotionally engage with that is a different question altogether. You see, this is a love that keeps on giving no matter what the cost is. It's a love that recognises our faults and our failings and yet is undeterred by them. It's a love that is met with selfishness and faithlessness and yet it continues to reach out to us. Here is a love that is different from anything else at all. It's constant, it's dependable, it's inexhaustible. And yet this is the God 
whom we serve. It's a God who longs to bless, not to punish, who longs to give, not to take away, who longs to build up, not to put down, who longs to forgive, not to condemn. No, of course, we do not deserve that kind of love because we abuse it, we betray it, and we deny it. And yet, that is the love that Jesus reaches out to us with time and time again. And we see that in the Bible because Jesus embodies the love of God. He does it in different ways. He washes the feet of his disciples. Now that is an act of love. He's demonstrating his love for them. On another occasion, he attends a wedding. He celebrates with them. And he, he rejoices in love itself, the love between a young couple. But he's there at the center of the wedding with his disciples. And on another occasion still, he stands with Simon Peter and looks Peter in the eye when Peter says to him, I shall never deny you, Lord. And as Peter says those words, Jesus knows that in the not so distant future, Peter will deny him on three occasions. That is the depth of Jesus' love. A last wee story for you. A mother was making pancakes for her two boys. And two boys, as they do, they were arguing and fighting about who could have the first pancake. Kevin, the older one, Richard, the little one. And the mum turned to Kevin and Richard and said, Look boys, if Jesus was here, he would say, My brother can have the first pancake. And she was patting herself on the back for this bit of moral teaching that she had introduced into her pancake baking. But as quick as a flash, the older one, Kevin, turned to his wee brother and said, Richard, you be Jesus. Jesus shows us the way of love time and time again throughout the Gospels. He demonstrates to us the love of God. Now, I want to be part of a team like that. And we should be part of a team like that because the church has to embody the love of Jesus Christ. The church also has to reach out and welcome the sinner, the stranger, the new person, the lonely, the outcast, the ones with a troubled background, the ones with the cloud of bereavement hanging over them. That's really a community that we all want to be part of. Amen. Before we go into our reflection, everybody, um, we go back to church. We are back at in-person worship on Sunday the 22nd of August. And I know there's great excitement and anticipation about that. However, I'm also aware that for many people, this short pre-recorded online service has become very important. It's something that they watch on a Sunday or even on a Monday, perhaps. And I don't want to lose that relationship with people. So, two things. First of all, if you would like the online service to continue, then please just drop me a text or an email. I'm trying to work out just how many people see this as being important. Just a text or an email to say, yeah, that means a lot to me, Alan. That's the first thing. Secondly, I'm aware that many of you have actually become part of our church family, our online family. And for many of you, that's quite a big thing. Uh, you feel part of the community, you've engaged with it. Some of you have retained your anonymity, that's fine. Others have made yourselves known to me. Again, that's fine. So what I'd like to explore is whether you would like to join the church. Not the in-person church, but the online community, the online family. Now don't tell my Kirk Session this because they don't know anything about it yet. But I would like to have some kind of online service where I simply mention your name, first name, in prayer and acknowledge that you're part of this family. You'll know who you are, nobody else will. And again, if that's the case, if you would like to do that, that is a, a step of, of faith for you, an important step of faith for you. If that's something you want to do, then please drop me a text or an email or WhatsApp and just say that that's something you want to do. And, and we'll arrange to do it over the next couple of months, maybe in October sometime, we'll have part of the, the service where we acknowledge those who are joining us online. Maybe you're a member of a church already, um, I don't see that as being an obstacle to joining Motherwell South online family. I see the two as being, as, as working together, as being mutually acceptable. 
Um, so please just drop me a note to let me know if that's the case and what we'll even do is we'll, we'll do everything electronically, we'll send you the church magazine electronically, we'll, we'll keep you in the loop as to what's happening with our, with our online stuff so that you're always informed. Let's go into our reflection. Pero la asombrosa gracia y amor de Jesús es más fuerte que la vida y la muerte. Wo auch immer du bist, ruf seinen Namen an. Jesus. May the blessing of God Almighty 
Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you all this day and forevermore. Amen.